All right, guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to do a, uh, a jetpack. So it's going to look like this when it's all done. Um, let me go ahead and hit play. All right. So uh, you hit control and you launch, and there's a little flame. And you run out of fuel. The fuel refuels, refuels. And then you hold down control to go again. As long as you uh, don't let it get all the way to zero, it actually goes right back up. If you let it go all the way to zero, there is going to be a cooldown, and you have to wait for it to um, recharge for about, I think, two seconds or one second. So here's how I did it. First off, you need to go into your character blueprint, third person or first person character, depending on which one you're using. And I'm editing it. And you need to create some variables before we get started here. First, you need a Boolean jetpack button down. Default value, false. Fuel, integer, default value, 1,000. Fuel max, integer, default value, 1,000. Amount lost, integer, default value, 5. Jetpack Z force, float, default value, 189,500. Amount gained, integer, default value, 4. We're going to do a... Uh, keyboard command keyboard and you're gonna choose left control for the pressed you're gonna set your boolean jetpack down to true you're then going to set the fuel to equal the amount of fuel minus the amount lost this will take away the a little bit of fuel which is five pieces of fuel or five parts of fuel out of your total thousand. It's going to then check, is that number greater than zero? Do you still have any gas or any fuel? If you do, there's going to be a branch. That branch is first going to activate the fire particle, which is in your viewport, fire. I stuck it right there. And I made sure to not have auto activation. If it's auto activate, it's always on. I turned it off. So the fire will activate, and it will deactivate if you run out of gas. Then we add some character movement after that branch. We add a force. In order to get this out, I pulled out character movement, drug out the pin, add force, and I right-clicked on force here, and I split the structure so that the x, y, and z value were separate instead of all being in one vector. And the next thing we, I did was a delay of 0 0.01 seconds. And that's going to just mean that this force is going to happen really quick. And then it's going to check and see, is the jetpack button still held down? If it is, if it's false, it's going to stop working, because obviously you don't need to keep flying. If it's true, it's going to go back here and check to see if you still have fuel and repeat the process again. So that's what those blueprints look like. Now, if you let go of the left control, the first thing that's going to happen is the fire effect is going to deactivate no matter what else is occurring. Then it's going to check and see, do you have less than two fuel? If you do, it's going to put in a two second delay. If that's false, it's going to put in a 0.2 second delay. But in either case, it's going to make sure that the jetpack button down is going to be, uh, that variable is set to false. We then come in here into a branch and we check to see if you have exceeded the maximum amount of fuel. If you already have a full fuel tank, it's, nothing else is going to happen. The false value is nothing. But if you have less than your max fuel, which is 1,000, this code is going to run. And again, we're, we have the button is not pushed right now. It's going to set the fuel by taking the fuel and adding it to the amount gained. It's then going to check and see if you, if you have the jetpack button down. As long as you don't, it's going to repeat this process. So after a 0.2 second delay, it's going to go back and it's going to repeat this process of adding fuel until the amount of fuel is 1,000 or you let go of the jetpack button. Now that we have that figured out, <clears throat> you have to create one more thing. In order to see how much fuel you have, you have to create a widget. Now right now, my, 
my force isn't going up very fast, so I might want to use a higher number. But you can always adjust the variable. So if you want to adjust how much Z force or how much fuel you have, that's totally up to you. But right now I need to go into my widget. I created one called Jetpack. To create a widget, you go to User Interface, Widget. That was a right click, User Interface, Widget, Blueprint. And I created one called Jetpack. In this, I created a text box, which I dragged here, text block, and changed the name to Fuel. And then I created a progress bar, which I drug here, and I changed uh, under percent, I did something called bind, and I created a function. Sorry, no, I did not do that. I, I um, created a bind, and I created a binding. That's what I did. And here's what it looks like. I'll go ahead and delete this so I can show you the one I created. Oops, where are you? I'm going to double click on it. Where is it? I'm trying to, oh, here it is. I have to click on that. Okay, so what it's going to look like is it's going to have this connected to this. This is the start of the function. This is going to be what it returns. You have to break those apart and you have to add the following. Cast a third person character, get controlled pawn, get player controller, player index zero. Then you need to go to, uh, as third person character, target fuel, fuel max. And you, then you need to convert these to a float and divide them. And what we're basically doing is taking the amount of fuel, dividing it by the amount of fuel max, and it's going to create some sort of percentage out of that, like 1 if it's 100%, or 0.1 if it's very little fuel. And that's going to be what affects the slider. That's all you have to do for that slider. Final blueprint, you have to go into your level blueprints, and you have to add event begin play, and you have to add these two codes, which are exactly what's on the board behind me. Um, and just make sure you choose Jetpack here. And once you do that, you should be good to go. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.